So with the NFL season being over at this point, I did want to get into what I think is the biggest story of the offseason, and it is what is Chicago going to do with obviously the first overall pick and that of Justin Fields. A quarterback for them that really doesn't have the great record to show for his three years that he's had there, mainly two. He didn't play that much in year one but has shown a lot of great flashes. Perhaps the best run, him him or Lamar Jackson is by far the most athletic quarterback in the NFL today. So you're not going to find that athleticism with pretty much any other guy than those two right now in the NFL. And he did show flashes with DJ Moore in a few games. They had a better year. They went 7-10, and 10, which is a huge improvement off of what they've been. But it is a very interesting question because it honestly is a toss-up. What do you do at this spot? Do you take Caleb Williams with a number one pick and get rid of Fields? Or do you keep Fields and do you trade that number one pick for a bunch of assets? And there are, are so many pros and cons of the two of them that... It's so debatable to the point where this is the job. This is if the GM makes the wrong decision on this, this is his job at stake. Are they willing to pass up on Caleb Williams? And I made a video about Caleb Williams. He's good. He's the best quarterback of this field in this draft, but I don't think he's a can't miss prospect. I don't think that it's it's a generational or like super special talent to the point where you have to take him and you can't miss him. I don't think that's what he is. But if we're looking at this from a logical perspective and from uh, a team success perspective, a lot of these quarterbacks who win their Super Bowls usually win them aside from obviously Brady and now Mahomes. A lot of these quarterbacks win their Super Bowl Bowls when they're younger and when they're on cheaper deals. Like a lot of quarterbacks, when they sign that extension, that's a lot of money coming off of possible death, depth that you can have on a roster. So Caleb Williams would be on that rookie deal his first couple of years and could really benefit what they could do with that roster. You would have a lot of other options, and heck, who knows, he might end up being really good. And the problem is with Justin Fields... You would be taking the risk of the point where they have to pay him. They're going to have to pay him if he is to continue to be on that roster. And that would potentially limit possible moves that they could make. I don't think that it would limit it that much, but it definitely doesn't give them as much money to play with when putting together the perfect roster. But if you really look at it, I think the field's can be a very successful quarterback in this league. It's all about the trust and the situation that he's in. I thought that Chicago was kind of dysfunctional from the start. I don't know if he necessarily has the right head coach that he kind of needs to have his full success. I think he's got, I think they're kind of one weapon away from having really good weapons. You have DJ Moore, who's an elite receiver, I like their tight end, Komet. I think he's pretty good. Other than that, they don't really have number two receiver. But that there could be a solution to that. Like I said, if you have the first overall pick in this draft, and if they are to trade that to Washington, who we know wants Caleb Williams, they have interest. They're going to make an offer. If that offer is like two future first-round picks, three future first-round picks, to trade down to number two where your your uh, punishment for trading that pick is getting Marvin Harrison Jr., who is probably is who is a generational receiver talent, maybe one of the best wide receiver prospects to ever enter the draft. Yeah, I, I think that that would really help them. I think that there's a lot of merit to doing that. And who knows what happens with Washington? Who knows what happens with Caleb Williams? Could you be burned? Because Caleb Williams turns into a really good quarterback. Yeah, he could be. But what happens if he is not that good? You don't have to take that risk of trying to develop him. You leave that to them. You have their picks now. 
and you could potentially have picks at the top of the draft again. You have Fields, DJ Moore, Marvin Harrison Jr., who probably will win rookie of the offensive rookie of the year. And you have a defensive-minded coach who's probably going to fix up that defense and make it better. There is a lot of merit to trading that second over that first overall pick to number two if the right offer is there. I really think there is. And I think that's I think that's the biggest conversation within the fields trading is the fact that they don't want to pay him. And I get that. And I understand that you would have more assets, that you would have more ability to bring in more assets if you were to draft Caleb Williams and he's on the rookie deal and what happens if he's amazing. But I don't think they have the personnel to develop him properly. So today I'm saying this, if I'm the Bears, I most likely, it really is depending on what Washington is offering. But even if Washington Washington is offering for that first overall pick, this year's pick and next year's first round pick, and maybe like a different gadget guy that you put in there, I think I'm taking that deal. I think I'm riding with Fields at this point. Because like I said, if they don't develop Caleb Williams wrong, it's going to be it's going to be really bad for Chicago. It's going to be really bad. And I think Fields is capable of doing it. He's not he's been in the system for a while. You're not going to have to redevelop him. I I don't think that they should trade Justin Fields at this point. Because I just think it, it, there's so many scenarios where this could blow up in the Bears' face. I think if they go with the approach of trading the pick, not having the burden or the pressure of Caleb Williams, you can kind of just sit back and let it happen. And you're going to bring in a generational talent with that number two pick. So that's just my verdict on it for right now.